Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the biggest lovable loser of the most, Avery LR32 here. And please do me a big old favor. Destroy the ever-living lovable loser just... Uh, ickiness off of that like and subscribe button. It's not even a boo-boo stain anymore. Although, one of the towels in my hotel room had a boo-boo stain, and it was really disgusting, and it wasn't the person I was staying with. So, and it wasn't me. So, yeah, I think that perfectly encapsulates what this YCS weekend was like. I just got home uh, a couple of hours ago. Wanted to go ahead and do a deck profile on what I played. Um, to get some stuff out of the way, I, I scrubbed out. I went 6-3. and three. And I know some people are going to say, well, Avery, 6-3 and three sounds kind of good, like you bubbled out. Uh, I went 6-3 and three in my head. By that, I mean I went X3 drop by round 6. Had I stuck around for round 7, 8, and 9, I would have just had three no-shows because once you're X and 3, you can't make day 2. So people would have just dropped and I would have had no-shows most likely. And even if I did have someone to play, I'm 99.99% .99 certain I can beat a fellow X3 scrub, no matter what it is that they are playing. <laughs> so, let's just dive on into this here. Um, yes, uh, I had not wanted to put this build or bring this build into light until the event was done. I had kind of briefly talked about it um, between playing a 50 and 60 card pile. And I ended up settling on a 52-card pile that did prove to be good. When I took it to locals, I went 4-1. and one. We've got great players here in Jacksonville. I was beating Snake Eyes. I was beating the all these meta decks and things like that. But when you go against decks that you're not preparing for and testing, like, you just sort of get fucked. <laughs> so... For those of y'all who didn't see my community post, I highly recommend you go check those out. Um, I'm not going to talk about my matchups here. I'm just going to talk about the decks I played just real quick. Uh, round one, we played Dinomorphia. That should just totally encapsulate what this entire fucking event was. We played against Rogue all day. We lost to Dinomorphia because, of course, we did. It's a bad matchup, and the deck is dog shit. The dude that beat me with it went on to go X3 drop because he's just like that. Um, then we played Snake Eyes, which was my only great match of the day. Really cool dude. I beat him. Then I had a Tempai Mirror, and he only beat me because he had cross out. Other than that, he was a scrub. I'm sorry, he was. Uh, and then we lost to Vanquish Soul, and the dude wasn't good. So, like, we lost to all of our bad matchups. So, I'm sure some people are going to probably think, like, I have a big ego by saying that. I'm not trying to. I'm sorry. It's just I don't like losing to bad players just because of the fact that they're playing a rogue deck, whereas I'm playing a deck that's pretty much specifically designed to beat Voiceless, Melodious, or Snake Eyes. Because if you take this build into Snake Eyes, you're going to win 9 out of 10 times. Like, there's no shot that Snake Eyes can beat you. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this list. This list is actually really crazy. Raigeki is absolutely an insane card. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive into the deck as it's laid out here in Dueling Book. Um, for the Hand Traps, we're playing 3 Ash, 3 Droll... 3 Shifter, 3 Valor, 2 Moonlit Chill, 2 Ogre, and then the 3 Imperm. Now you're probably wondering, Avery, you're playing Droll and Ogres and Valors, they all conflict with Shifter. Here's the thing, right? If you see Shifter into, like, Snake Eyes, it's a blowout card. Like, you're just gonna win the ball game. But if you don't see that in a 52-card pile, maybe you see Ghost Ogre, Moonlit Chill, and Valor. Maybe you see Droll, Valor, Moonlit Chill. Maybe you see some kind of combination where Droll, especially into the Tempai Mirror, is very good. It's another blowout hand trap. Similar to, you know, a hand trap uh, like an Ash into a hand that's not optimal, you can shut them down. Or like Imperm Ash plus Valor, like whatever the case may be. So I wanted to play a high hand trap count because we are playing almost 60 cards. It worked out for me. You know, if you see Shifter and Droll, you don't give a shit because you're just Shifter the opponent. If they negate it, cool, you've got Droll. If they don't, then they're going to lose because they're under Shifter. It was actually funny because I played against Pure Cash Tira. That was the other deck that I beat. Um, and it was funny because I Shiftered him game one. And then he activated Prosperity and revealed three Shifters, Prosperity, and like an Imperm and like something else. And he took the Imperm. So it was really funny that I ended up 2 owing him. I took out the Shifters and then I waited out his Shifter in game two. He went to go search like a berth and I drolled him and he scooped. Like it was really funny. 
Um, so yeah, the hand trap lineup was totally fine. Um, for the actual monster lineup, we're playing three Fenrir, one Rise Heart, two Unicorn, three Chundra, two Fodra, and three Pydra. If you saw my 10th place regional build where I played the three Fenrir with the Rise and I wasn't on any pot cards, um, surprisingly enough, my build was very much unoptimized, uh, then you'll know about the Chirabini line that we were on. I extended the Cash Chira lineup because the cards are good going first or second. Like, it's actually really crazy. Um, and then set rotation, of course, to go with the planets and the Sangin summonings, which is also really good. Um, if I'm under shifter, then with the extra cash cards, I can just make a Shangri Era and pass. And then ideally, I'm sitting on like planet plus birth plus a unicorn, Fenrir, and Shangri Era. Um, didn't come up at all because out of six rounds, when you play against a bunch of bad rogue players, it's just not going to come up. Um, but in practice, this is absolutely insane. Like Fenrir is a one card OTK with the Chirabini line. Unicorn can help you set up. I actually ended up OTKing the Snake Eyes guy in game one because I just set up a Rise Heart with like, what, like, I think double Fenrir and Unicorn because I also had Birth and Theosis. Like, it was just crazy. Um, for the spells, we're playing the one Birth, one Theosis, double Lightning Storm, double Desires, double Planet, triple Raigeki with triple Kaiman, three Summoning, one Set Rotation, one Terraforming, and we already talked about the Infirms with the Traps. Um, so... Unpopular opinion. This is going to be a hot take, I'm sure. But you know what? You can put some ice on it so that we cool down the hot take. Um, Raigeki is the same as Droplets. Change my fucking mind. You don't have to discard cards for Raigeki, and it's not once per turn. So if I'm seeing a hand where I like open Ash, Imperm, uh, Raigeki, Unicorn, Fenrir, and I draw into like a Chundra, I'm happy. Because I'm going to use both my hand traps to stop you from making a board. I'm going to Raigeki the hell out of you, and then I'm just going to use my cash cards to play through your hand traps, and then I'll summon a Chundra and just win the game. This card's absolutely insane, and nobody was on it. Um, I highly recommend that you test this card out, if, especially if you don't want to play Droplets. It's just a non-once-per-turn board buster. It's absolutely insane. Um... For the side deck, we'll just go over this real quick. Uh, Magna Mutt, Double Pancratopsies never came out because we played against Rogue Scrub players. Um, then the three Cosmic, the three Heat Wave. This card's very high risk, high reward. It's it's kind of whatever. Um, Cosmics are just good. Three D Barrier, three Strike. It's another good going first card. Um, for the extra deck, we're playing the one Zalantis, the one Striker Dragon with the one Little Knight because you can Striker Dragon make Little Knight if the opponent tries to Baguska you. Uh, the one Raging Phoenix, Promethean Princess, Haida. This shit's standard. Uh, Chirabini for the Chirabini line that if you don't know the line, go look at my 10th place deck list and you'll see uh, how it's done. Uh, one Draco Shack. Uh, Draco Shack? Yeah, Draco Shack. Uh, one Shangri Era, one Trident Dragon. I sold my ulti. I ended up selling this deck. I made three hundred six dollars. It was great. Uh, one Transcend, double Biden, uh, or Joe Biden, I guess as some people call it. Uh, one Black Rose and one Ancient Fairy. I actually won with Ancient Fairy in time against the uh, Snake Eyes player. It was really funny. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's the list. It, uh, it it is what it is, right? Like had I played against Snake Eyes all day, had I played against Meta decks all day, I would have done so much better. I, I genuinely believe I would have made day two. Uh, I genuinely believe I'm at the caliber of a level of a player to make day two. But when you get fisted with no lube and you run into Dinomorphia in game one, which for those of you who don't play Tempire or maybe just aren't familiar with the deck at this point for whatever reason, uh, Dinomorphia is an extremely, extremely hard matchup for a deck like Tempai because it's kind of like Lab, but Dinomorphia is just a garbage version of Lab, even though Labyrinth itself is kind of garbage, but on a scale from 1 to 10, Lab is like at an 8 level of garbage, whereas Dino's at a 10. Dinomorphia, you know, they can just set 5 and pass. It's very hard to beat a trap deck when you're playing a going second OTK deck, especially when Dinomorphia wants to go first. So you run into Tempai, win or lose the die roll, you're going to go first. And then the Soul of the Supreme King is just a card that, in the context of playing against, uh, playing against Tempai, needs to be banned. Like, that card's just insane. Um, uh, it is what it is, right? Um, I feel like I am an excellent level caliber of player. I definitely feel like I'm at the point now where if I walk into a regional, whether it's in California, Florida, Georgia, you name it, I can walk into the room and assume I'm going to get my invite. It is now not something I feel like I have to absolutely grind for. I think it's something that I can just walk into the room and say, give me my invite, and I deserve it. Because I'm just at that level of a player. Again, not trying to say I have a big ego. It's just that I feel that confident in my abilities at this point. So guys, let me know down in the comments below about what you think about this deck list. Again, um, I'm just really sorry that I couldn't bring home a victory for you know all my friends in Jacksonville. I'm sorry that I couldn't bring a victory home for you guys, the subscribers and the followers that I have. Um, I'm sorry that I couldn't do better. You know, the, the, the cards were not 
thrown in my favor, no pun intended. When you play against scrub rogue players who think they're making a good meta call when it's a garbage meta call, unless they specifically play against Tempai, there's nothing that you can really do. Um, again, the Snake Eyes guy I played against, was that was a great match. It just everybody else, I felt like any other deck I could have played, and we decimate them out of the room. Um, I, I was one of the better players in that room. I felt like I really deserved to make day two based upon my skill level as a player, but I decided to go with a deck that's honestly just garbage. Um, you have to make so many concessions with playing this deck. You have to play this game of teeter-totter where if you win a game, you don't know if you're going to go first or second. So you have to like half-ass side to go first with heat waves and then side deck going second shit, or like have your whole side be for good for going first or going second, and then you have heat waves. Then at that point, you're forced to play 40 cards, so you have a 33% chance to see the heat wave. It's just a bad time all around. Um... I'm taking a break from this format. Don't worry, I'm still going to be making content and stuff, but I'm definitely taking a break from this format. I'm not going to Nats because Infinite Forbidden is going to blow this terrible format even wider open. So let me know what you guys think. Go have fun with this this build. This build's actually a lot of fun. Like, if you're a Tempai fan, this build is a lot of fun, especially, like, if you're just playing at Locals and stuff or even going to a regional. Go get your invite with this. Go go play it at Locals. Just have fun. Like, this is a really fun deck to play, especially opening up multiple Raigeki. It puts people on tilt. It's just a fun card to play with. So... Guys, thanks for being so understanding about where I'm coming from, and thank you for continuing to support the channel. We're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep doing our best, and I'm going to keep bringing you the content that you'll enjoy. So, guys, thanks for watching. Love you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.